Well, for my next video in this bow making series, I'm going to jump way ahead in the book. Now, I'm only doing that because Valentine's coming up, and she has a heart-shaped bow. And I thought, well, I'll try to do that before Valentine's. I'm right at the end of January here. So what I've done here is I've taken some scrap. I had a piece of poplar that was a little too narrow, and I threw a little bit of a scrap piece of a walnut in it. I'm not really intending to go for a specific design, but I think that might make an interesting little little difference in the bowl I make this time, instead of all being one piece of wood. She does a bunch of laminated bowls with different colors of wood, and they can be very interesting. This is something very basic, and I'm just kind of doing it just to uh, use up some scrap and get the next project. This is still a practice to me. Uh, this, we're going to jump forward in some technique here. As you can see, if you can see that, on this picture of this heart bowl, she's got three rings. This is three-quarter inch. But you look at the pattern, it's only got one. So this is a little more advanced technique. You cut the first pattern, the first ring out of this pattern, and you take and lay it on the top to draw your next line, your next uh, cut line. And you do that with each successive ring. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm going to try on this one. But basically I'm doing it because it's heart-shaped and kind of skipping forward a little bit. So uh, let me get this pattern scanned and mounted. And uh, we'll work through the procedure of getting each ring set. And we can also check angles as we go. This one's supposed to be at 25 degrees, I do believe. And so I'll have to reset my, I don't have a, an angle gauge for that. I got one for 28 and one for 38. So I'll be making a new angle gauge for this, this uh, project. But, uh, and I think each ring may have a different different degree. I haven't gone through that now. Uh, I'm going to just look at each step as we go and see what we have to do. So I'll go, go I'm gonna get this out and scan it, get it mounted, and drill, we'll drill the first entry hole and cut that first ring and then take the next steps after that. So I've got the pattern mounted. And the procedure is right there. It came with the same page the pattern was on. It's very simple, but did multiple steps and different angles. <clears throat> Going to cut this first outline at 20 degrees. And then drill an entry hole here at 20 degrees. And cut this one at 20 degrees. And then you take this piece, this ring, and lay it down on the what's left of the base. You mark the inside of it. For the second ring, drill your entry hole at 25 degrees, and then you change your table on the saw to 25 and cut that next one. And then do the same thing again with that, let it set it back down, draw your uh, mark on the inside of it, and then you're going to go to 35 degrees. And that's going to give you a curved side on the bow. I've done that before, I haven't done it out of this book. I've made that work before, but you got to be pretty sure you're you're getting those angles correct and you're drilling in the right place as with any bowl. So then this is, uh, you're going to have a curved on the outside of the bowl and the inside of the bowl, which means I'm going to make great use of the flexible pad sander on the outside. So I'm going to get a new blade in the saw. I'm still going to try to cut that with a, uh, a number five blade like I did the last one. And uh, it cut fine, it didn't deflect. So that, and I have the drill bits lined out to drill that with, so I don't have to do a lot of math or guessing. So let me get everything set up. We'll cut that outside and move on from there. Okay, after a lot of fine adjustment here, I think I've got it on 20 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this outer ring. And then we'll drill the entry hole and stay at 20 degrees and cut the inside of that ring.
Okay, I got that cut, and I I used part of the waste material on the outside of this to make my 30 degree angle, um, 20 degree angle uh, block. I've got it marked. So uh, I used it to go over to the drill press and set it. And if, I'm pretty sure it's 20 degrees, but if not, at least they're both the same angle. But uh, I drilled this with the same drill bit I did the last one, a 1.2 millimeter. And the blade seemed to deflect ever so slightly in some areas. You put a flat, uh, something flat up against that, you can see it's bowed out just a little bit. So there's a little bit of deflection in the blade on the outside cut. So I've changed blades. It also had trouble cutting, like maybe it was something wrong with that blade, like it was dull. I was having trouble following that line, and it was making up its own mind most of the time. But anyway, I put a new blade in. I've drilled this entry hole, and it appears to fit. I've reset this table using this block. So now I'm going to uh, make this cut, get this ring out, and then we'll move over to the table and set it on this blank and draw the next cutting line. Okay, I got it back to the bench now. I've already set my table on my scroll saw to 25 degrees, which is the next cut. Uh, I'm going to use this to set the drill press because I'm going to draw this line. Now I'm going to line this up very carefully, draw the line, the cut line for the next ring, and then I'm going to mark me a, a, a entry hole spot and then go over to the drill press and drill it. Uh, let's get this lined up. Kind of helps to have this different colored wood. Get it where I'm happy with it. That looks pretty good right there. See if I can see that. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to put me an entry hole. I believe right about there. And that one's to be at 25 degrees. Try and get it started at an angle if I can with this all. Make sure I'm right on that line. All right, take that to the drill press and drill it, and then get back over to the scroll saw and cut it. I've got the uh, line marked, changed everything to 35 degrees. Now that last cut I made, the drill bit flexed in the hole and made it out of line at the bottom a little bit. Uh, I went over there this time, didn't realize I knew something wasn't exactly right. And I was looking at it and when I drilled this one, I could see it doing the same thing. So I moved over and drilled another one and I was a little more careful about what kind of side pressure I put on it. I think I pulled it on it a little bit trying to keep it lined up with the line and caused it to deflect because it's a very, very small little drill bit and it's real easy for them to flex. So I think I got the second one drilled a little better. This hole should be uh, covered 
I believe, when I put this. Oh, both holes will be covered by the rings. But again, this is a practice bowl too, so that's one of the things I'm learning is how not to stress that blade, or that bit, when I'm drilling it. So I'm going to cut this one, and we'll see how this turns out. Well, it's all cut out. I got the patterns off of it, done a little preliminary sanding on the gluing surfaces. And I'm fairly well pleased with the way it's lining up. It's lining up a little better than the last bowl I did. I've got a, got a spot down here where the drill bit was out of, flexed a little bit, but I believe I can sand all that. As I shape it, I'll just have to shape it to remove that. The shaping is kind of a personal preference, I believe, as to how you want the finished product to work. Now I got to glue it together that where it's lined up and get everything straight. So I uh, get my press over here and I'll get my glue and I'll start trying to put it together. Well, it's successfully glued together. I'm fairly well pleased. I have one bad spot right here. I think I can sand out. That's where my drill bit uh, flexed in the in the hole. The rest of them, the rest of the drill marks are very manageable. Uh, it's not really out of line very much. It's, it's about normal. It's really, really nice. It's not going to be that hard to sand and get smoothed off. So I've got to move over to the, I've got to set up my sanding rig. And that's going to be a long process. It could be two or three hours of sanding and I have to take breaks because I get tired of standing there and holding the position so, so long. So I'll come back and, and check in as I go. First, first I'm going to sand this inside. Then I'll glue the bottom on, go through the same process I just did gluing these together. And then I'll, glue, I'll, I'll sand the outside. So let me get my sander set up and start sanding and I'll check back in with you as as I make progress. Well this sanding is moving along very nicely. I've already gone through three grits and it didn't take very long. It didn't take a lot to smooth it off. I had a spot down in here. I still need to work on a little bit. And it looks like right there, you get over in the latch and see a little better, but uh, I'm very pleased with the way it's going. A little more touch up on that and I'll be ready to glue the base on. Well, I'm going to call that good for this part of the sanding because I'm going to do a little shaping and thin this lip later. And so now I'm going to glue the base on. And that'll be a two step process like gluing the rings together. I'll glue it in preliminary gluing and then clean the glue off and then set it in the, uh, in the press for about a half an hour or better. Now I'll have to do a lot of sanding on the outside to get some of these marks out. But it's easier to get to. I got my little flexible pad sander that I'll be used probably exclusively for this. So let me get started gluing this on so we can get to the next step of the sanding and then we'll get to shaping.
So the bowl is totally glued together now. I just got to sand the outside and then I'm going to go back and shape it. I'm going to sand the outside, get all these uneven areas taken off. I got to sand some uh, grill marks out of it. Got the inside looking pretty good. I'm kind of happy with it right now. And I'll try to shape it. I'm, <clears throat> I've only got one coarse sandpaper attachment for my little sander and it's beginning to break down but I'm going to try to make it through this. I got another one. I got three more coming. They won't be here for a couple of days but I'm going to try to shape this bowl with the one I've got or maybe the next next uh, grit down if I have to. Anyway I'm going to get over to the uh, grill press as I'm sanding this on the grill press. I'm going to put the little pad sander in and I'm going to start on the outside. There's just enough curve on this bowl and on the outside I don't think I can do it with the uh, drum sander. It's too straight. I don't want to straighten it out, flatten it too much. So let me get over there get started and we'll check in as we go. Well that's most of the preliminary sanding. Uh, it's coming out pretty good. I'm learning some things with this bowl as I move forward about drill bits and and blades and the combination thereof and how to avoid making bad spots on the bowl. But uh, I'm going to go back and work on the inside with my flex pad center. I'm going to try to thin this down and shape the bowl a little bit. I've got a flat spot right here where I had to uh, get a grill, grill spot out of it. So let me get back over there and start working on the inside as long as my sandpaper will let me. And uh, see if I can make it look a little more finished. Well, for sanding and shaping, I think I'm going to call it. Still got a few little spots on it. Really aren't uh, as good as I'd like them. Got that drill, one drill mark that's just really way deep. I'm not going to go any further on there right now. Uh, tapered the edge. Had a little problem over here. Tried to break off on me. You have to be real careful how you taper that down. Especially depends on how the range, grain is running, what kind of wood you're using. But uh, it's not the best it could be, but I'm not unhappy with it. I'm going to clean it up, maybe raise the grain on it and sand it again. And then I'll, I'll put some tongue oil on it. And we'll see how it brings out the, the grain of that uh, walnut and see how it looks. So I'll put some uh, cutting board oil on this. It's some mineral oil good grade mineral oil and uh, I really like the way it brought that walnut out. Now that walnut come off a piece of second material that I bought. It had a real big knot right up here which gives you all this this nice grain look. So this these are supposed to be practice bowls in which I'm supposed to learn things and I'll tell you what I learned with this one. Chasing the smaller blade and smaller bit it's not necessarily the best philosophy. I like the idea of the small drill hole, the easier to sand out. But what happened with this one, on two of the three holes I drilled, the bit flexed in the hole. It's, it's in three quarter inch wood and it's tiny little bits. And they, they flexed in the hole and one of them went way off as you can see right there. Uh, and the first one I didn't realize it had done it. That one I saw it when it happened and I went and drilled a different hole. So that's that's the learning part of this bowl. Plus with three quarter inch material I was cutting with a number five blade and it flexed a little bit on the top ring which was not super important because it was within sanding dimensions but it flexed really badly when I got into this walnut right in here, it really I had to really sand to get that down. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go any smaller than a 7 in the future on this uh, 3 quarter inch material, whatever it is. And the harder the material, the more of this, I'm going to have problems with it. So I hadn't had a lot of problem with the poplar, although it did flex a little bit on the poplar and the, and the drill bit flexed on it. So I'm going to move back up to 7's for a minimum. And I'm going to cut next several bowls with that with a little larger drill bit and it's less likely to flex because they get real flexible when they get small and it's real easy drilling at an angle like that to put pressure on one side and make them move in the wrong direction. 
So that was the main thing I learned here. And I also learned I need more than one sanding pad for that uh, flexible sander because it, I finally wore it out. I did finish this. Uh, one other thing I learned is be real careful coming up on these points, so depending on the wood you got and where the grain is. It's real easy to slip on that little flexible pan, pad sander and get hit on the side and broke it. I broke a little notch off over here and had to sand everything down a little bit and reform it. So anyway, those are all learning experiences, and that's what I learned with this one. Now, I wasn't intending this to be a, a real fine final bowl, but it's just another lesson learned. I may revisit this bowl later with uh, some more fancy material and uh, a little better idea what to do with the drill bit and, and the blade. So I hope you learned as much as I did off of that. You learned from where I messed up, and that's the only way I know to learn is to do it. You can read about it and watch it, and that helps, but you still got to do it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing it and learning. And not a perfect bowl, but my wife really thinks it looks neat, so I guess it's a win-win. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next bowl video. I'll have another one up next week. I'm not sure. I think it's a square rounded bowl. A little simpler than this one, but uh, I may move to a different wood if I can find something uh, that I like, if I've got enough of it. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.